Harun Yashai is a Jewish community leader who was in contact with Khomeini back in 1979. <laughs> و یهودیت یک دین مورد احترام ایشونه و یهودیان ایران هم که ایشون در نطق خودشون هم گفتن یهودیان ایران شهروندان ایرانی هستن و حقوق شهروندانشون مثل هموطن عرب هموطن دیگری برای محفوظ این مدن دای ایران در ویرچلی نو کیسز از انتی سمیتیک ویلنس از کنید که هر بود در سمی پارت از یورپ Indeed, all indications are that Jews and Muslims live harmoniously. Nowhere is this better illustrated than here, at this Jewish hospital in southern Tehran. It's one of only four Jewish charity hospitals in the world, and reputedly one of the best hospitals in the country. Staff here are Muslim and Jewish, as are patients. Barangas Hasidim, a Jew, is in charge of administration. Whoever comes to our hospital, we are asking what's your pain, what you are suffering for. We are not asking what's their religion or what, how they think or what's their ideology. Inside this building is a Jewish library with books in Hebrew and in Persian. Where pictures of Islamic revolutionary leader Ayatollah Khomeini and Moses sit side by side. There's a kosher butchery, where kosher meat is served up by Muslim butchers. And there is also at least one kosher restaurant. It's here I try and talk to some young Iranian Jews who believe their country is misunderstood in the West. Moses Baba, a well-known Tehran identity and antique dealer, is a good example of the fact that Iranian Jews enjoy a degree of freedom that would surprise many in the West. In recent years, Jews like Baba have been allowed to freely visit Iran's arch enemy, Israel. اومدن تو مچدامو گفتند شنبا هر وقت میخواید برید و بیاید آزادید گل دادم به ما ایش کاری دون ندام هر سال اول میرم اول میرم ترکیه از ترکیه اسرائیل بعدش میرم امریکا بعدش دوباره میام ترکیه میام ایران While many Iranian Jews are now traveling freely, statistics show that the number leaving for good is actually falling. Despite the fact he has children and grandchildren in Israel, Moses Baba says he isn't going anywhere. برای که من ایران رو دوست دارم به خدا هر وقت برم اونجا 20 روز میمونم میام اینجا فوری یه مسلمان ها و یه خوب است که تو دنیا از خوبی نی برای مومنه خدا پرسته احترام میذارم باروخت های دنیا این رو میره خالم بوره میوره خواهش Perhaps to Westerners used to the scenes of conflict between Jews and Muslims in Palestine the concept of Jews living happily in a Muslim state is a strange one but here in Iran it doesn't appear unusual تفکیه بگید من مسلمانم به شما کلیمی هست این یعنی این ارتباط فرهنگ ایرانیان با یهودیان بسیار بسیار امیقتر از ارتباط اسلام جون هم هست باروک یوسیخ، 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 باروک یوسیخ نزدیکتر است با سایر ادیان فقه یهود یعنی فقه که میدونید که بعد فقه یهود در چیز کامل با فقه اسلامه
ایران در واقع به وطن فرهنگی یهودی ها هستش خیلی جالبه که آثاری که ما در ایران داریم از فرهنگ و تمدن یهودی حتی از آثاری که در اسرائیل هم هستش بیشتره Synagogue board member Robert Halder believes the Islamic revolution of 1979 was good for their faith. ببینید من میتونم بگم که انقلاب اسلامی ارمغانی که برای جامعه ما بورده اینه که ما هم بعد از این انقلاب بیشتر کلمیان ایران مذهبی هستن مذهبی شدن در کنار یک محیط مذهبی بودن بسیار راحتتر میتونه آدم مذهب رو قبول بکنه تا یک محیطی که مذهبی نباشه رابرت هالدر از یکی از فیو پیپل هیر که اگرید تو سپیک بود می سلام هر شما تو خوبه شی ایز مای مالی قبول باشه این من نمیدونم که چرا مهم هست برای جهانیان ما الان همه چیز رو اینجا به راحتی ما داریم انجام میدیم ما تمام مسائل فرهنگیمون، مذهبیمون شما الان دیدید جشنهامون مدارسمون، تعطیلاتمون همه چیز رو در کمال آزادی داریم ولی گفت همونطور که گفتم شاید این درست انکاس پیدا نمی کنه به خارج The Iranian Jews pray and read the Torah in Hebrew, but they talk in Farsi. They are their own publishers of religious books and prayer books they use. Rabbis are trained by Iranian yeshivas. Between 300 and 400 people come to this synagogue. There are 15 synagogues in Tehran and another three in the suburbs. This is more than in Moscow, that has a mere four synagogues and 10 times as many Jews as in Iran. The Jews have been here for the last 3,000 years and see Iran as their homeland. Many fought for it as volunteers. Saturday worship at synagogues cannot do without wine. There is a ban on alcohol in Iran, but the ban doesn't apply to Christians and Jews. Another surprise in Tehran is this address I was given. It belongs to an antiques dealer. I thought in Iran he and his kind were in hiding like the Warhols or Vazarellis. Apparently not. Hello, hello, welcome, welcome. Bonjour, <laughs> Hello, sir. Live la France. Live la France. Tea? Vodka. Vodka. Baba Moshe is Jewish. Okay, so vodka in the Islamic Republic of Iran. Vodka. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> or Jewish hotel. Jewish no problem. <laughs> chin chin. Lachai. Lachai. <laughs> so you make it? Tish. Tish me. Yes, it's homemade from grapes. La maison. La maison. Ah, très joli. So we've got. Alcohol and naked women. Clearly, this is a different place in Tehran. <laughs> is it, is it easy to to be Jewish here? Yes, it's very nice here. They let us be. All the rest is just lies. Here we have fun with Muslims. We laugh together, and no one bothers us. I can't obviously guzzle booze in front of the mullahs, but Iranians are great. 
Actually, for Jews and other religious minorities, times were hard after the Islamic Revolution. But today, the situation has gotten better. Is there a synagogue here in, in Tehran? Yes, there are 25 synagogues in Tehran. 25 synagogues Jewish in here? Can I go to a synagogue? <laughs> now I can go to synagogue. So I'm here in the heart of Tehran, in the capital of the Islamic Republic, and this is one place I never thought I'd get to wear a kippah. Uh, I'm in one of the biggest synagogues of the city, and it's true that it's hard to imagine that there's a Jewish community in a country where the president says that he wants to destroy Israel. I've been invited here by Siamak Mercedes, one of the pillars of the Jewish community. It's absolutely incredible. They just brought out the Torah. And I must say, these are images that I never thought I would see in, in Iran, that's for sure. This is really incredible to meet an Iranian Jew. I never thought I would. How is it to be a Jew in, in Iran? You must remember that Iranian Jews are living in Iran and are Iranian for more than 30 centuries. <laughs> so it's not an interesting <laughs> phenomenon. Maybe interesting also that Iran has the greatest population of Jews in the Middle East after Israel. Of course, being a religious minority in a religious country has some problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they are not majors. People compare, I think, a little bit, you know, the condition of Jews here to the condition of Jews in Germany before the war. You know? They are not. Uh, they cannot be compared with each other because in Germany it was faced with a fascist and racist regime. Mm -hmm. But in Iran we do not have a fascist system. Uh, maybe there are some conflicts between Iranian government and Israel. Mm -hmm. But it does not affect the life of Iranian Jews mm -hmm. because according to Iranian thoughts and Iranian government and also Iranian people, there is a distinct separation between Zionism and Judaism. Yeah, so the political conflicts between Iranian government and Zionism does not affect the day-to-day -day life of Iranian Jews. Oh, yeah, Jews great. Is it a mix here between Iranian yes. art culture and Jewish culture? Correctly. It's a, Correctly. Thing, yeah? it's a combination between Iranian culture and Jewish culture, which you can see in many of Iranian synagogues. Uh -huh. Mercedes wants to show me another of Tehran's temples, the Temple of Politics. Welcome to the Iranian parliament. The constitution here guarantees that every ethnic and religious minority has a parliamentary seat. And Mercedes represents Iran's 25,000 Jews. Here I am inside of the Iranian parliament. And, I mean, what is surprising about Iran is that Iran is a democracy. It's an Islamic democracy with its own rules, but it remains a democracy. And in the region, the other big democracy is Israel, obviously with its own rules also. Mercedes is rarely at a loss for words, but he never drifts far from Iran's political line. You feel also the ambition of Iran yes. to become a world, you know, a power. Mm, of course, Iran is a power, in, uh, at least in the region and the Middle East. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And no one can do anything in this region without respecting to the benefits of Iranian mm -hmm. people, Iranian nation, of course. Yeah. Iran is a democracy, right? Yes. Israel is a democracy. Yes. So yes. why can't these two democracies find a common uh, ground? Israel uh, is a new country which is formed by the forces from outside the region. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But Iran is an old country with uh, history roots many years ago. Mm -hmm. So this cannot be compared with each other. Of course, uh, in Israel you say that many different
people are victims of homicide and vic uh, victims of uh, intolerance and victims of obligation. You mean the Palestinians? Yes. Yes, yes. I think it's the first time in my life that I hear a Jew criticizing Israel. <laughs> it's not the first time. I think you must change your idea. You can see the many people in the uh, Jewish population in different parts of the world who are criticizing the Israel. For example, Noam Chomsky. Yeah, Noam Chomsky, yeah. yeah. Or other uh, different people. For example, the Progressive Association of Jews in Europe mm -hmm. is an association formed at first to uh, fight against uh, fascists. Our religious leader, Amullah, greeting a member of parliament with a kiss on each cheek. And what's so striking about this is a member of parliament is Jewish. His name is Dr. Siamak Morisadek, and he's the de facto leader of an estimated 20,000 or more Jews whose roots in Iran date back more than 2,000 years. He's also a surgeon who runs, believe it or not, a Jewish hospital in the heart of Tehran, where most patients are Muslim. Many Americans are surprised to know that there's a Jewish community in Iran. And once they discover this, they will want to know what is the level of discrimination against Jews in Iran. Here has the greatest Jewish population in the Asia and Middle East outside of Israel. And I can say that there is no important discrimination between Iranian Jews and Iranian Muslims. Still, the vast majority of Jews, tens of thousands, have left Iran since the Islamic Revolution, many landing in New York and Los Angeles. Of course, being a religious minority in a religious country has some problems. Problems like the international conference President Ahmadinejad hosted questioning the Holocaust. Now, Holocaust is not the official statement of the Islamic Republic of Iran government. I think they are the personal accounts of President Ahmadinejad. In fact, as the president was making headlines for denying the Holocaust, Iranian state television was showing a 22-part series about the Holocaust and a man known as Iran's Oscar Schindler, one of several diplomats who issued Iranian passports to save Jews fleeing the Nazis. Do you know how many Jews were saved? Uh, there are something about four to five thousand. Other images you might not expect to see in Iran, women firefighters, a female race car driver. Iran's Jewish community happens to be the largest in the Middle East, outside of Israel itself that is. On assignment recently in Tehran, reporter Bronwyn Adcock found herself at a gathering of the devout in a city synagogue. It's Thursday night in central Tehran. And inside this unmarked, nondescript building, a special event is underway. Some of Iran's 25,000 strong Jewish community are celebrating the festival of Purim, commemorating the ancient tale of a plot to kill all the Jews of the Persian Empire. It's a story of survival that shows the deep Jewish roots here, going back more than two and a half thousand years. Iran, in fact, is a country of Jewish history. خیلی جالبه که آثاری که ما در ایران داریم از فرهنگ و تمدن یهودی حتی از آثاری که در اسرائیل هم دستش بیشتره. For almost 30 years though, Iran's Jewish community has lived in an Islamic state. Synagogue board member Robert Halder believes the Islamic revolution of 1979 was good for their faith. I can tell you ما هم بعد از این انقلاب بیشتر کلمیان ایران مذهبی هستن مذهبی شدن در کنار یک محیط مذهبی بودن بسیار راحتتر میتونه آدم مذهب رو قبول بکنه تا یک محیطی که مذهبی نباشه 
Robert Halder is one of the few people here who agreed to speak with me. She is my mother. Iranian Jews prefer to keep a low profile and are uneasy about foreign journalists constantly asking what it's like to live in an Islamic state. تمام مسائل فرهنگیمون، مذهبیمون، شما الان دیدید جشنهامون، مدارسمون، تعطیلاتمون همه چیز رو در کمال آزادی داریم. ولی گفتم همونطور که گفتم شاید این درست انکاس پیدا نمیکنه به خارج. The existence of a Jewish community here has long fascinated the West, primarily because of the Iranian government's hostility towards the Jewish state, Israel. And Iranian Jews recently came to international attention when President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad described the Holocaust as a myth. For Iran's only Jewish member of parliament, this was too much. Maurice Matamid describes himself as Iranian first and a Jew second, but felt compelled to speak out. <laughs> آقای احمدی نژاد به عنوان ریاست جمهور ایران تکذیب کرد و نفی کرد تراژدی بزرگ هولوکاست را من با صدور بیانیه‌ای که در سطح جهان پخش شد اعتراض کردم به این بیانات چرا که ریاست جمهور ایران اقدام کرد به نفی و تکذیب یک تراژدی که میشه گفت بزرگترین تراژدی تاریخ بشری بوده و من همون موقع اعلام کردم که این یک توهین بسیار بزرگ به تمامی یهودیان در سرتاسر سر دنیا بوده. Despite the controversy caused by Ahmadinejad's comments, Maurice Matamid says the president was not supported by other Iranian politicians and later appeared to modify his views. Holocaust denial is frequently linked with anti-Semitism. Did the president's comments make you feel insecure about the position of the Iranian Jewish community? خوشبختانه حالت ناامنی تا به حال در جامعه کلیمیان مشاهده نشده و دلیل اصلی اون هم این بوده که سیاست کلی دولت ایران، کشور ایران به هیچ وجه یهودی ستیزی نبوده و انشالله در آینده هم نخواهد بود. In modern day Iran there are virtually no cases of anti-Semitic violence of the kind you hear about in some parts of Europe. Indeed all indications are that Jews and Muslims live harmoniously. Nowhere is this better illustrated than here. at this Jewish hospital in southern Tehran. It's one of only four Jewish charity hospitals in the world and reputedly one of the best hospitals in the country. I'm shown around by a Muslim man who's worked here for two decades. Intensive care unit. Staff here are Muslim and Jewish, as are patients. Farangas Hasidim, a Jew, is in charge of administration. Whoever comes to our hospital, we are asking what's your pain, what you are suffering from. We are not asking what's their religion or what, how they think or what's their ideology. No. And most of the patients, more than 95 patients that we are treating in this hospital, they are on Jewish. The hospital runs primarily on donations from Jews both in Iran and abroad. Though recently the government of President Ahmadinejad made a donation of 25 million tomans or 32,000 Australian dollars. 25 million tomans is not a significant uh, payment and a significant amount uh, according to our costs. But uh, in the other hand, As a part of uh, this donation, 
have a cultural effect on us and said that government wants the hospital to persist and to work and to serve Iranian population. So it was a, it was a positive message yes. as well as it's, actual... It's a positive message. This message said to us that condition is not very bad and there is not a, a specific problem between Iranian Jewish society and Ahmadinejad government. All around Tehran, there is a significant, albeit discreet,